Welcome to day number four. Welcome to day number seven. Day number 12. Welcome to Do It Heartily. Aloha, welcome to day number 130. As we finish off our final day on Hebrews chapter 12, verses one and two. But while you get your Bibles out, let's open in a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you now. Thank you so much for everything that you do. Thank you that we have this channel that we can still communicate back and forth to be able to worship you, to be able to go to your word and uh, grow in our relationship with you. I pray that whoever's watching this, they've turned the TV off, they've turned the radio off, they are in a position to where they can be alone and uh, focus 100% on you. Remove the devil and his distractions and speak through me this hour. And I pray that this video brings you all the honor and glory. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. All right, Hebrews chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. We've talked about Nike. We've talked about Adidas, Asics, Under Armour. And now here we are finishing, up, finishing it off with Reebok. But before we jump into this, I uh, just want to give a quick shout out and a thank you as you can see, it looks a little different than from the other videos. I'm actually on the big island right now visiting family. My cousin Jesse, he has his own YouTube channel called Tech Box. And uh, after this video is over, uh, take a look at the link in the description below and go check him out. Uh, subscribe, give him a few likes here and there. And uh, again, thank you for doing this video for us. All right, Hebrews chapter 12, verses one and two. Wherefore seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which doth so easily beset us and let us run with patience the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. Verse number two, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. I want to read to you Reebok's mission statement, uh, just part of it. At Reebok, we see the world a little differently, always challenge and lead through creativity. We see the world a little differently. So basically they're saying, uh, Nike, Under Armour, uh, Adidas, Asics, they all look at the world the same. But for Reebok and their sports apparel, they look at things differently. I don't know how, but that's their mission statement, to look at things differently. And that's what we're going to talk about today and how we need to view things and look at things with our eyes as Christians in this race towards the Lord. So again, verse number two, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. Think about an author, someone that writes a story. If we want God to write our story, we have to do the first part of that verse and keep our focus on Jesus. Look unto Jesus and don't take your eyes off of him. Uh, we're gonna talk about two people that did that today. Go to Genesis chapter number 19 at this moment. Genesis chapter number 19. Now we're not gonna read the whole chapter for time's sake, but this is the chapter that deals with Sodom and Gomorrah. God is going to send fire and brimstone to this place for all the sin that they've committed. You gotta remember Romans 6, 23 says, for the wages of sin is death. Sin equals death. And God has had it up to here with the people in Sodom and Gomorrah for all the wickedness and the sin that they have committed. He's not just taken out a few people, he's taken out an entire place. However, he is gonna spare one family that is not amongst all that sin, and that is Lot, his wife, and his children. He's going to spare them. He's given them fair warning in verse number 17. And it came to pass when they had brought them forth abroad that he said, escape for thy life. I think we need to keep that in mind with this race that we're running in our relationship with the Lord is that this is not a basketball game. This is not three miles in cross country because if you lose a track meet or if you lose at a sport, you live to play the game another day. However, in our race with the Lord, it is for our lives, okay? We need to be running to the Lord every single day because it's based off of, off of our life, not a game, all right? So he says, look not behind thee, neither stay thou in all the plain, escape to the mountain, lest thou be consumed. Consumed means you are going to die. And one of the warnings, uh, he says, look not behind thee. Don't look back. 
When I played, uh, not played, when I ran cross country, our coach used to tell us that when running the three miles. Always look ahead. If you hear footsteps behind you, don't look back because when you are looking ahead, you are running in a straight line. If you turn your head and look behind you, you actually veer off the path that you are running and your opponent then has an advantage to run past you, to overtake you. Same thing in our race with our relationship with the Lord. If you look back at your sin, you're going to veer off the path that God had for you as our author, and we're going to give the devil the advantage to overtake us. Uh, I used to play basketball as well. Our basketball coach would tell us the same thing. If we're dribbling the ball, we have a breakaway, we're about to score a layup or a jump shot because we've gotten past our opponents. If we hear footsteps behind us, we should not look back because your knee could hit the ball, knock it out of bounds. So many things could go wrong if you look back. Same thing with our run, with our relationship with the Lord. If you look back at your sin, so many things can go wrong. Focus on the Lord. But look what happens in verse number 27, that, uh, excuse me, verse 26. But his wife looked back from behind him and she became a pillar of salt. Remember, the wages of sin is death. Lot's wife commits a sin. She completely ignores the instructions. Don't look back. She looks back and it costs her her life and she became a pillar of salt. Let's look at someone else that did not keep their focus on Jesus. Turn with me now back to the New Testament to Matthew chapter number 14. We're going to look at verses 27 to 31. It says, But straightway Jesus spake unto them, saying, Be of good cheer, it is I, be not afraid. So some context here, this is where the disciples are on the ship, they're in the water, and Jesus has now appeared to them, and he is walking on water. At first they get afraid, they think it's a ghost or apparition, but Jesus says, hey, don't be afraid, it's just me. Verse 28, And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it be thou, bid me come unto thee on the water. Peter says, hey, I want to come to you. He's not trying to perform this miracle himself. He knows he will be able to walk on water because all I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. The only way Peter's going to walk on water is through Jesus and Jesus alone. Verse 29, And he said, Come. And when Peter was come down out of the ship, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. The miracle has happened because of Christ and Christ alone. Peter is now walking on water. But look at verse number 30. But when he saw the wind boisterous, he was afraid. And beginning to sink, he cried, saying, Lord, save me. Verse 31, And immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand and caught him and said unto him, O thou of little faith, wherefore didst thou doubt? Jesus already knew exactly where he, he, he started to doubt. Peter was looking at Jesus, and then all of a sudden trouble came. Peter looked away from Jesus, and he began to sink. Don't be like that in your relationship with Christ. As soon as trouble comes, you take your eyes off of him, you're going to start to sink, and you're going to start to feel overwhelmed and anxiety. And all of a sudden, Lord, save me. You're crying unto him. When in all manner, if you would have just stayed focused on Jesus, it never would have happened in the first place. Keep your eyes on Christ. Reebok says uh, that we see the world a little differently. We shouldn't, as Christians, we shouldn't, we shouldn't look at the world at all. We need to focus on Christ. All right, a couple of questions here for you. Make sure you're keeping your eyes, your mind, and your heart on Jesus. Number one, out of Nike, Adidas, Asics, Under Armour, and Reebok, which one am I a fan of? Number two, out of Nike, Adidas, Asics, Under Armour, and Reebok, which one are you a fan of? Number three, what happened to Lot's wife? Number four, who walked on water with Jesus? Number five, what is Reebok's mission? Number six, uh, what YouTube channel filmed this video? What's the name of it? Number seven, what was the name of the place God destroyed with brimstone and fire? Spelling does count, so make sure to go to Genesis chapter 19 for the answer. We love you, God loves you, and aloha.